Hello, my friends, and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Time with Miss Sarah. I hope that you have had an amazing week and that you are ready to dive into God's Word and see what He has to teach us tonight. You're going to need your Bible, a spirit ready for worship, and ready to have some fun. Are you ready? Great. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for this night. Uh, Lord, I am grateful for your word. Uh, Lord, I love how you can teach us something from the very beginning of your word all the way to the very end. Uh, things that even though this was written many, many years ago, God, that you are still relevant and working in our lives today. And God, I am so thankful that you are a true living God who keeps his promises and who loves us more than anything else. And uh, Lord, so I just give this night to you. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would just speak your word uh, through me to the boys and girls and their families who are watching tonight. And these things I ask in Jesus' holy name, amen. All right, so this month, I'm super excited. Uh, we have an unmasked theme, right? So how many of you have ever watched The Unmasked Singer? I love that show. I love the music. I love the costumes. I love the mystery of who is behind the mask. And uh, so this month, we're going to be walking through the integrity of God um, and how it, what it means to be truthful in our own lives. This week, uh, we're in the book of Daniel. So you're going to find that in the Old Testament toward the beginning of your Bible. And Daniel was a remarkable um man. His story um, in God's Word starts from when he's a young boy, and we watch him go all the way through, and God uses Daniel in a mighty way um, to be part of Jesus's story as well. And so um, in this week's story, we see that um, the Babylonians, uh, at the time, uh, Nebuchadnezzar is um, king and he has he's the king of Babylon and he has taken over uh, Judah which is where uh, Daniel is living where he's from and he they come in and uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was not a very nice man at all um, he was not a very good king and he didn't worship false gods he did not worship the one true God and so he, he came in and he took over uh, Judah and Daniel and some other young men uh, were taken captive into slavery. And they were the strongest looking, they were the most handsome, um, they were smart, and they were taken uh, to be put in the king's castle they were to be trained and uh, renamed and uh, to become Babylonian citizens. And uh, so after all of this had taken place, there is uh, Daniel and some of his friends and they were the fairest and the strong, which means they were the best looking and the strongest looking of the men that were taken and uh, the young men that were taken, and they um, were given a, a a guard, and his name, I have to read this, because his name is kind of, it's funny, was Ashpenaz. These are lots of weird names. Could you imagine having a friend named Ashpenaz? Anyway, and uh, so this guard um, decides he's gonna, uh, he's following the king's orders, and he's gonna give Daniel and his friends new names. So he gives Daniel the name um, Belthazar, and then he gives his other friends uh, the names Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So uh, if you are familiar with that story, you know a little bit about them. We'll talk about them later. Um, if you have are in my preschool family, then you have already heard the story of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Uh, but today's story, tonight's story, we're gonna be talking about Daniel. Um, with his friends, but mostly with Daniel. So Daniel started to know God had given him wisdom at this time. And he wasn't very old. I mean, we're talking like, 
um, maybe 14 or 15, so uh, not not super old. And um, but God had started to already give him wisdom, and he told Daniel was like, okay, they're giving us new names. They're they're trying to have us forget who our true living God is, who we really are. He's trying to they're trying to turn us into somebody that we're not. And, uh, but so far everything's going okay. So Daniel takes the new name and, um, and he, you know, they're going about their life in, in prison, in captivity. Um, they have to exercise regularly. Well, then their guard is, um, he brings them food. And he was like, it's time to eat. He goes, this is, um, the king wants y'all to have the very best food available. So this food, um, comes from the king's table and and the king wants you to to feast on anything that you see here this spread this table was full of yummy food like it smelt good it looked good it was all kinds of yummy stuff and daniel and his friends were hungry they were excited to eat but daniel remembered if it comes from the king's table first before it was on the king's table, it was offered to false gods. That was the Babylonian belief. And um, part of their worship um, against false gods. And Daniel said, he turned to his friends and he said, I know you're hungry, um, I'm starving, but we cannot eat this. It is not, it's not for us, this food, was offered to false gods before it went to the king, before it came to us. And if we eat of this food, we are denying who God is, and we are choosing to accept that it's okay if we, um, if, if we accept this worship to false gods. And Daniel knew deep in his heart that that was not okay. So he goes to the to the guard, to um, Ashpenaz, and he tells him, we, we can't eat this. It's not good for us. We will not deny the one true God, and, and we can't eat this food. And the guard is scared to death. He's like, you don't understand. If you don't eat this, the king will have me killed. Like, I am in your like I'm to take care of you. I'm to make sure that you eat. I'm to make sure that you exercise. I'm to make sure that you are super healthy um, because the king wants you that way. And so Daniel said, I tell you what, he said for 10 days, bring me and my friends fresh vegetables and water. And that's all we're going to eat or drink for 10 whole days. And at the end of those 10 days, if we are just puny weaklings, then, um, then we'll, we'll eat food off the king's table. But if we are stronger and just as healthy or healthier, then, then we know that our God is the true living God and we will honor him and continue to eat only vegetables and drink water. <clears throat> and Ashpana says, okay, you have yourself a deal. So for 10 days, that's all they ate was vegetables. Now, how many of you could eat only vegetables for 10 days? Probably not too many of you. I love veggies. So I, it would be hard because I enjoy to eat meat too, but I could probably eat vegetables for 10 whole days. I would miss my chicken, but I could do it. So they decided this is what we're going to do to honor God and to let God that we love him and that we believe he is our true living God, then this is what we're going to do. So at the end of those 10 days, Ashpenaz came back and he's looking at all of the prisoners. He starts first with the prisoners who ate meat and all the yummy food off the king's table. And they looked healthy. He said, okay, you know, you look strong and, and you, you know, good job. Well, then he gets to Daniel and Daniel's friends and he is amazed because all they ate were vegetables 
and drank water and that was it for the entire 10 days that they were stronger looking they were healthier looking and they were smart they could answer all kinds of questions they were able to physically um, do the exercises and things that the that the guard had asked and he was amazed at how are you all you ate were veggies all you had were carrot sticks and broccoli how could you possibly be stronger than these men who ate meat and all of the other things off the king's table and Daniel turned to Ashpenaz and he said we believe in the one true God we will not worship false gods we are not Babylonians we are Jews and we worship the one true living God in everything that we do from what we eat to what we say and how we act so in today's bottom line be truthful with your whole life don't ever compromise or be something that you're not just to fit in or um, to make yourself look good or so that you won't be embarrassed be truthful with your whole life if you are if you act one way at school and at home make sure that's the same person that you bring to church on Sunday and Wednesdays I'm telling you you get the real Miss Sarah all the time the Miss Sarah you see right here is the Miss Sarah that is here Sunday mornings or that is in my home with my children um, any other day of the week. Sometimes I'm crazy, sometimes I'm firm, but I always am truthful to who I am. And God tells us to be the very same way, to live a life of integrity and to be truthful with our whole life all the time. Our Bible verse for this month, it's brand new, I haven't quite memorized it yet, so I'm gonna hold it up and read it to you. It's Proverbs 10, 9, and it says, anyone who lives without blame walks safely, but anyone who takes a crooked path will get caught. Proverbs 10, 9. That tells us that if you are living truthful, then you are safe to keep on going. But if you choose a crooked path that's not truthful, you're going to get caught. That means that when we choose to tell a lie or not be truthful, we're going to get caught. We can't keep it a secret. My friends, I hope that you have enjoyed this story from the book of Daniel. Remember I told you it was in chapter one, all the way through, um, enjoy the book of Daniel. His story is amazing. But I hope that you are also encouraged to live a truthful life. Live a life that's full of integrity. God's character shows through over and over and over. But one thing that we can trust about the character of God is that he is always truthful. He is full of integrity. From the beginning of the Bible all the way through the end, if God says it, God means it. We can know without a doubt that he keeps his promises and is true to his word. He is a man of his word. Let's pray and then I'll let you go for the week. Father God, I thank you so much for this night. Lord, I thank you for this wonderful story from the book of Daniel. Lord, I thank you how Daniel's um, courage to stand up to worship the one true God from everything he did, including the way he ate, I pray, God, that it will encourage boys and girls and their families, God, to live a truthful life. Lord, to live a life that honors and glorifies you with everything they do. I ask these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, my friends, enjoy worship. Um, throughout the week. Remember, families, if you need access to any of our um, Sunday Bible videos or any of our kids' music uh, worship videos, 
please, please, please let me know if you don't have that password. Um, it's super simple and I promise you won't forget it. Um, but if you need it, let me know. But you have to private message me, email me, text me, however, stop me on a Sunday. However you um, need to get a hold of me, reach out and do that. And I promise I will give you that password. I'm not stingy with it. Um, it's not a secret. I just can't say it on um, social media, but I'd be more than happy to give that to you. Also, I want to remind you of the parent queue. You should be getting those emails every week. And that password is on the bottom of those emails at the very end. But um, keep in touch with what we are.